Hello YouTube, this is Hunter Surge of the Brawler Cafe. Been a long time since I got to do that one. Had, having to work that one out of my muscle memory. But today I am here with a video telling you about the game I've started playing recently that I've been doing content for the last couple of weeks back on my personal channel. Um, this is a video that will be going up on both channels. Uh, only this one will have this little intro segment. And basically I'm going to be talking about what excites me about this game, why I've decided to return to content to do it, uh, to talk about it, and all that good stuff. And if you if you like what you're hearing, go over to my main channel, Hunter Search, and subscribe. I would love to have you. Alright, let's get into it. Hello YouTube, this is Hunter Surge. So this is something I probably should have done a bit closer to when I started doing content again. But I wanted to do a video today talking about the things that excite me about Elastros, the things that really got me into going i want to do content again for this game and yeah it is going to be a good old top five list and not really it's just going to be sequential order of five things that make me really excited um but we're going to talk about it so number one is this is kind of a, a dual reason it, it's two things that intertwine together it is a specific combination of the basis on Yu-Gi-Oh, but not ne really necessarily being based on Yu-Gi-Oh specifically. It is more not being based on MTG slash Duel Masters. Plus, being a Western developed game. Let me tell you, Duelists, I am really, really, really sick of having to wait three months after the cards come out to be able to play with them. It's really annoying. I really hate it. This is why I was able to get as excited for Buddy Fight as I did. Because we were getting simultaneous releases. Maybe two weeks late. And you will notice that my content really started to fall off. The, the less that that continued to be the case. I tried to get into a bunch of Western uh, games that come out in English first. Or simultaneous releases. But all of those are based on MTG or Duel Masters. They're all mana based games and like i can have a decent amount of fun with mana based games but i can't get excited for them is a big problem with me i do not really like the way those types of games flow it's really difficult for me to get excited for me to really have fun with them to really get into them they feel too constrictive and the games that i really love the way that they flow refuse like, I'm looking at you right now, Vanguard. Like, I have a lot of problems with the way you are currently designed. However, I still get really excited for your gameplay. But you just refuse, despite three or four opportunities, to get to a simultaneous release. Something that your company has done before. And Bandai is, is getting on the train with this. But all of their games are based on Duel Masters. They're all mana-based games. Even Digimon, which isn't really a mana-based game in the traditional sense still has a lot of the Duel Masters feel that while I like a lot of Duel Masters mechanics on paper, they are not things that I that like fix the problem I tend to have uh, with not really getting into the game flow of Duel Masters type games. So having a game that is Western developed, so I'm going to be able to play with the cards as they are being first explored and uh, is not based on Duel Masters or Magic, is like the most important one of the most important things for me for getting excited about a game and like we need more games like this you can't just base all of your games on magic it's boring it's incredibly boring cool you like magic that's cool man hey the big three all play really differently from each other there is a reason for that you should maybe be exploring a bit more the ideas, the unique ideas and game flows that Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon have, but so many card game developers just refuse to do that, and it's really, really frustrating. So, just that fact that it's Western developed, uh, so I'm going to get access to the cards uh, as they're being explored, and it's not an MTG or DM clone, is huge for me. Like... This video is also going up on my old Bakugan channel to try and get some of them over here. And like while Bakugan was Duel Master Space, it had a lot of the things that were cool about Bakugan had nothing to do with that Duel Masters element. And in fact, you could really like that was the least important part of that game's design. 
easily the least important part of that game's design could easily be stripped out and replaced with something else. Didn't even need to be a, a, a traditional deck of trading cards, to be honest, because it's completely irrelevant to the most uh, engaging part of that game. Number two is the Spirit Deck. The Spirit Deck is super interesting to me because as someone who vastly prefers the game flow and game speed of Yu-Gi-Oh! inspired games, games like Vanguard, games like Buddy Fight, etc., etc., things that don't use like a building permanent mana pool, games like that. Um, something that has something that I've I've run into time and time again is that it's really difficult to implement the the freedom of deck building with like soft restrictions that magic colors provide which is one of magic's biggest strengths as a card game is that ability to technically put anything in but you are going to be restricted and your deck is going to become less consistent the more colors that you put in so you have a soft restriction on on how much how much different stuff you can be putting in your deck and dual masters games and any games with that system have a similar thing going on by nature of still needing the mana colors, as long as you don't do a kaijudo and uh, make every card in the mana pool uh, be every every color that has been put in any amount, then it breaks really easily, and you easily make three to four color decks really really easy to do. So the spirit deck is super interesting to me because it is this idea that allows a a non mana based game to have that freedom of deck building but soft deck building restrictions and like having eight colors specifically i feel is actually really important because the amount of colors that you can comfortably fit into the spirit deck is is larger than you can come really comfortably fit into a magic deck or a dual masters deck or whatever so you need a higher number of different colors so that uh the amount of the card pool that you are able to get comfortable access to doesn't really change basically how it goes right now even with the even with the skittles math decks <laughs> even with the skittles math decks like you cap at like five colors which is a bit more than half of the color pool which makes it about equivalent to a three color magic deck which is like exactly where you want to be the only issue i have with the color system right now uh in illustrials is that some of the colors aren't really don't really have the splashable stuff that really tempts you to go into them and one of the colors has just lost its most tempting splash tool lava lift it's gone down to one um and earth has been hurting that way you do kind of need replacements to pull people towards these different colors so you have more meaningful decisions being made like the day where when we have a really appealing splash cards from every color to the point where people really start going okay do i need that do i go for the ass rabbit ass rabbit is something i don't really want to go away like i could i could see like a new version coming out that replaces it as worse stats say the beta stats of two four uh that would be fine but i think a card like ass rabbit especially a card that pulls you into these other colors is really important uh, by having these default default splashes that you want to go into it makes further splashes uh, more taxing and the more different splashes you want to go into you start going okay maybe it's time to cut this this really powerful generic tool is that worth it and those sor sorts of deck building decisions are really really cool to me i like that sort of stuff a lot it's the most appealing part about mana based games to me and seeing it in a game of this speed is really important to me and i'm it's super exciting to me to see how this system will evolve and and to play around with it and like it's it tests like this unique skill that you don't see in any other card game it's super cool i like it a lot it turns like the color mixing aspect of mtg into a okay you're going to make your deck less consistent into okay to run more colors you have to be real good you have to be real good at managing it is going to be on you as a player to be able to go into more colors. And that's super, super cool. It's sick. It's sick. I love it a lot. It's one of the most appealing parts of this game. It's so cool. So cool. I really, like... I have seen some some uh, people suggest, oh, maybe, maybe we should be hard restricted to three. And no, I never want to see that. The coolest part about the Spirit Deck 
is that it allows this freedom of deck building, but soft deck building restrictions uh, to exist in a Yu-Gi-Oh! speed game, in a non-mana game. Uh, the way me and my friends used to refer to this speed of game was ungated. Ungated game. That is so, so key to the appeal of Elestrals to me. And I really don't want to see that any sort of hard restriction ever occur. The card design just needs to get better at pulling pulling people into different colors so that they start having to make hard choices about what colors they want to be splashing into their decks. Number three, cheap and accessible. Oh my god, oh my god. Like, like the constant aggressive reprint policy, how often... Like, the printing of Altar of Stars in the tournament pack and the Daybreak starter decks at the same time. Um, no card being more than $15. Really utilizing collectors' vanity rarities the way they should be. Um, the way they're used to be really appealing collector's pieces that take a lot of pressure off of the normal rarity cards uh, to, to carry the value of a set is so, so, so key to keeping a game in an accessible spot. And there's so many good cards in the commons and the uncommon slots, and it's just sick. My only complaint in this regard is the Star Deck exclusive runes, the Gorgon's Gaze, the Poison Tipped Arrows, the Resting on Your Laurels, that's less of a problem now. But I, I'm hopeful that in the future, those will get like, those will get more reprints, like normal reprints in a set, in a tournament pack, and I'll resolve that problem completely. Like, if you're able to find access singles, which will become a lot more easy when TCG Player uh, opens up, uh, the fact that you can build like a really, really good deck for like 50 bucks is so sick. It's so sick and like it's fine on the profit margins, it seems, because you have the full arts, you have the reverse sellers, you have the serialized sellers. Those are the big money makers that you are looking for not so much the key playable pieces and that's just huge to me that's that's a really really important thing to see um a team that understands how to utilize collectors uh, vanity rarities to uh keep their game accessible uh, it is a tool it is not the it, a collector stuff is not the key selling point of the game it is a tool to keep everything about playing the game cheap. And it's super good to see a team that seems to understand that. Argo was a new holo rare in the Star Decks. Cypermel, uh, Dense Fog uh, was normal rare. Spectaris, holo rare, instantly reprinted in Shattered Stars, all of this stuff. It's super, super sick. It gives me a lot of hope in this game's future. The online uh, ranking stuff, uh, like those rewards for uh, the Divine Favor system is something that is has some flaws right now that I'm probably going to talk about in a later video. Um, but it is something that I really appreciate. Like one thing I really appreciate about it is that you do get divine favor for every round you play in. Because what that means is that even if you're at a point where you can't get like top cut prizing in any given tournament, you still have this incentive to keep playing in the tournament, which is something that is it's great. That's good. You want you want your players to want to continue playing your game as much as they can when they come out to play in a tournament, and like you don't like time time of course, but like people leave when they want to. But like I want to be here to play the game, and I want to be have this encouragement from the game's systems to continue playing the game. So this divine favor system that rewards you for just continuing to play a game or just getting wins, even in rounds when you're out of the running for top cut, is just very, very nice. Something I appreciate a lot in a card game. There are definitely flaws in the Divine Favor system. The biggest thing is that there really needs to be some sort of best finish limit so that people with like three or four locals don't have this huge outsized advantage over people with only one locals. But otherwise, it is a system that I enjoy a lot. And like having this, this, uh, this prizing at the end of the season to work towards is just a really nice incentive when you don't have like a proper tournament cir circuit set up yet. Uh, it's all very, very cool. Um, and leaderboards is just cool, man. It's just cool to have a leaderboard. It's just fun. <laughs> it's just fun to have a leaderboard. And like the fact that even even on the site, if you go to an LGS that runs events, 
uh, they will have like a a leaderboard, an ELO leaderboard that only pulls from from games played at events at that store. That is super sick. That is super cool. It is it, oh, there's a bunch of stuff with the Lestros Play Network that I just think is super cool. The fact that they collect data on who goes first and second, this data that you would normally only really have access to in uh, in a digital client is something that they are able to collect through IRL events is super smart, super cool. Lots of really great stuff being done there that really makes me very happy. And the biggest thing, number five, the biggest thing for me is just, I look at the car design and the design space of this game and I get excited, man. I want to see where this game's going to go. It makes me want to talk about stuff. Like, there's there's tons of stuff about this game that I just want to talk about. I want to be there when new cars are being revealed. And I want to talk about their implications for future design. Where design is going. Because there's so much of this game's design that hasn't been explored before. It's, it's a lot of untouched territory, new ideas... Um, that are going to cause a lot of uh, a lot of stumbling because you can't draw on uh, previous games as much. Uh, but it makes the game really exciting to analyze, really exciting to evaluate cards for, really exciting to see new stuff for. And that's really what what really needs to be there to push me to make content. I need to be excited to talk about it. Like I want, I tried to do Vanguard content in the past. I tried to do Digimon content in the past. I could never get those going very far because I was never excited enough to talk about it. But this game, this game makes me feel like I did in Buddy Fight, like I did in Bakugan. Those games were both exploring some stuff that hadn't really been done before. Uh, there was a lot of new concepts that hadn't been done by many, many games. At least games that had survived to that point. Uh, Bakugan especially had a lot of like very unique stuff going on that made cards really interesting to evaluate. And yeah, that's just what I need. That's what I need to encourage me to make content. I need to be excited to get on camera and talk about a card. I need to see a new card and go, oh, that's cool. I'm not sure if I'm going to be right about this or not, but let's see. Let's put our let's put our ideas out there. Let's try and evaluate this thing. Let's try and figure this out. It's just really cool. And you're seeing like new new ideas explored in the, in this game like every tournament and people still just figuring stuff out and it's just super exciting to be here super exciting to be talking about this game to be participating in this community to be going into tournaments trying out decks seeing what works seeing what doesn't it's just super cool now can we let me let me go above 40 cards you should let me go above 40 cards please let me go above 40 cards please let me go above 40 cards i want to be a sicko 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 goodbye this is hunter search signing off